So, Roger Corman and Kaiju, a match made in heaven? Welcome to my channel, KC, that's me, Carrie Chuck the Sledge Storyteller, here to talk about the wonderful world of storytelling and talking about the storytelling found in public domain movies, and specifically Kaiju. Now, Night of the Blood Beast, it's a strange beast, so I believe that fits the criteria, according to the Japanese word. And it's a rarity among Roger Corman movies because he's managed to do well in keeping his movies copyrighted, but somehow he let this one lapse into the public domain. And one puzzling factor here is the title, Night of the Blood Beast. I mean, what do you think of when you hear Blood Beast, a monstrous bloodsucker, right? And the movie poster wanted you to think that way as well. But this monster will just kill one person, and there's no indication of massive blood loss at any time. But come to find out, the working title was Creature from Galaxy 27, in line with 50 sci-fi, and more palatable with the story. Between the actual title and the misleading movie poster, I have to believe some moviegoers were pretty miffed once they realized how bloodless it was. Directed by Bernard Kowalski, whose directing career has been dominated by TV episodes, the story begins with astronaut Major John Kokorin in an animated spacecraft, suddenly in peril from an unknown cause. He crashes on Earth, and the Earthbound crew show up at the wreckage and confirm the worst. He... he bought it all the way. You're certain? No respiration, no heartbeat, no pulse. Came down pretty hard. Naturally, it has a hard emotional impact on Corcoran's fiance, Dr. Julie Benson, and surrounding her are two of the greatest candidates for Mr. Sensitivity. I can understand how you feel. But we can't let it interfere with the work we have to do. Well, let's get going. Surveying the wreckage leaves crew members Dave Randall and Donna Bixby baffled over a strange gas along the side and a strange muddy substance as well. Yeah. And emerging from that after everyone leaves is animated moss. Preliminary examination by Dr. Alex Wyman of Corcoran's body shows him lacking in rigor mortis far past the time when it should have set in. Corcoran's body is brought to their facility where everyone's further puzzled when his vitals turn up a blood pressure reading. And why you would even try that on a corpse tells you to remember that this is a shoestring budgeted movie that was shot over a one week period, if Wikipedia is to be believed. Suddenly a big disturbance erupts and something breaks out, leaving Randall injured. Amid mysteries of Gokoran's body showing signs of life, a blood sample is taken and we get a second helping of cheap animation to show that something is taking over Gokoran's blood cells. Now, you have me in this situation among this group. I'm taking every precaution necessary to avoid any kind of catastrophe, like what we're kind of going to get. But they leave Kokorin simply laying on an operating table to check on regularly. And while Julie is still mourning amid an apparent resurrection, Dr. Wyman speaks of the scientific breakthroughs that he sees coming about. Later in the observation room of the facility, Dr. Wyman is killed, and suddenly Donna discovers... <laughs> so yes, Kokorin's alive. No one immediately thinks of any potential problems that may be coming about with that, but we're already hearing talk of alien kaiju having benevolent intentions. And then we find out that Kokorin had become a human incubator to the Blood Beast's offspring. Enter the Blood Beast, and everyone but Kokorin wants it dead. The Blood Beast escapes amid a hail of bullets and fire, and we afterward have to hear more passive reasoning. Don't understand. It didn't come in malice. It could have killed all of you earlier, but it was me it was after. It had to come back to me, too. So we've got Randall and other crew members, Steve Dunlap, looking bloodthirsty as they remain determined to kill the Blood Beast, especially when it grabs Donna. But strong reasoning has a second guessing. This isn't a battle between men and a non-reasoning being. Can't you see it doesn't want to kill for the sake of killing? It could have done away with all of us earlier if it wanted to. 
Kokorin gets everyone to voice their agreement to give the Blood Beast a chance, but Randall and Dunlap secretly iron themselves to the teeth in anticipation of destroying it by any means necessary. We have that planned encounter after mere minutes of continued pleas from Kokorin to hear the Blood Beast out. We suddenly hear speaking with dead Dr. Wyman's voice. Now I am able to speak by assimilation of uh, former processes. With a promise that his race, growing inside Corcoran, will bring a better way of life to Earth. So yeah, maybe too soon after reviewing Zontar. Suddenly we're forced to switch mental gears that the commandos of the crew were right all along. And now Kokorin has to agree that the Blood Beast is hostile and begs everyone to kill him so that the baby Blood Beasts don't emerge to oppress the human race. He ends up killing himself, and his friends manage to burn the Blood Beast alive. The end. Now this story was conceived by Gene Corman, and the screenplay duty was given to first time and you know, only time screenwriter Martin Barno. And you look at his filmography, his forte in Hollywood was makeup and sound effects. And I have to believe that the screenplay assignment was just dropped in his lap and, again, Wikipedia. Apparently, he needed help from his friends and fellow screenwriters, uncredited, Jerome Bixby and Harold Jacob Smith, to write the dialogue. And, yeah, that's easily the strongest part of the story here. But surely you have to pick up on how this is poorly written copycat of so many sci-fi and monster movies. The alien takeover of a spaceship the alien possession, the deceptive promise by an alien of an elevated society. Now, all this plus one common factor between It, Plan 9 from Outer Space, Tarantula, and several other so bad they're good movies that helps keep them watchable, they're short, and they don't wear out their welcome. In the case of Night of the Blood Beasts, it's only an hour and two minutes. But yes, it's worth a watch, ideally with a group in the spirit of Mystery Science Theater 3000. But again, thanks to free streaming platforms, it's readily available for your viewing and educational player as it's in public domain. But that's my take on the public domain movie and kaiju, Night of the Blood Beast. Thanks for watching. Agree, disagree, something I left out? Please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel, please click subscribe or follow me on Instagram. As always, the link to order slides number one and two is below in the description where you can order Sledge Number 1 on Kindle. In any case, you can order it on digital or paper format. Still working on Sledge Number 3 for it to have a strong ending in that three-part miniseries. And Tiago, he's giving me some new stuff. And hey, this is going to be the official cover. And he has just a couple more pages to finish. And, you know, I got the final polish on what we'll see these as part of some pages. But... Again, let's look for civility amid all the bad news out there about social and political strife. Let's not hate. Let's find friends wherever we go. Everyone be safe and God bless.